Hi, it's Tim from OracleBase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to use the Apex Mail package to send emails from PLSQL. There are several ways to send emails from PLSQL, each with their own pros and cons. There are links in the description to posts about them. The Apex Mail package provides an API to interact with the Apex Mail system. It's a natural choice for any Apex applications that need to send email, but it also works for regular PLSQL code that isn't called from Apex. There's some setup we need to do. We log into the internal workspace, then navigate to Manage Instance, Instance Settings, then click the Email tab. If you're using a local relay on the database server, you can use the default settings of localhost and port 25. If not, fill in your mail server details and click the Apply Changes button. If you're using SSL to access the mail server, you'll need to load the root certificate into a wallet and reference it from Apex. Under Instance Settings again, click the Wallet tab. Enter the path to the wallet prefixed with file colon. If the wallet is auto-login, you don't need a password. Click the Apply Changes button. We connect to a privileged user and create a network ACL, so the database can call out to the mail server. The ACL principal is the Apex user. We reference the host and port of the mail server, and we define the required privilege. With this in place, we are ready to start. We connect to a normal database user, in this case the workspace user. When we call the Apex mail package from an Apex app, the Apex session and security group are already set. For standalone code, not called from Apex, we have to manually set the security group. We use Apex workspaces to get the workspace ID. We use that in a call to Apex util set security group ID. We can now use the Apex mail package from a normal PLSQL application without Apex. The send procedures and functions allow us to send various types of emails. In this example we use the send procedure to send a plain text email. We pass the values for to, from, the message body and the subject. We use UTL TCP carriage return line feed to format the body if required. Notice we commit the send call. We're not sending the mail, we're queuing it to be sent. The Peabody HTML parameter allows us to send HTML emails. We define club parameters for the body and body HTML. The body includes a message telling the recipient to use a HTML client. The body HTML defines our HTML message. We use the send procedure in a similar way to last time, but this time include both the body and body HTML parameters. The Apex mail package is really good at handling attachments. In this example we define variables for the mail ID, a blob attachment and a club attachment. We assign some junk binary data to the blob. In a real situation this could be a media file or a document. We assign some text to the club. We send the mail using the send function which returns the mail ID. We call the add attachment procedure, passing the mail ID, the blob attachment data, the file name and the MIME type. In this case the data is junk, so we use a generic MIME type. But if this were a real file, we would use the appropriate MIME type. We make a second add attachment call, this time passing the club data and using a MIME type of text plain. Remember, We've only queued the messages. If we're quick enough we can check the Apex mail queue and see the three messages in the queue. The mail queue is processed every five minutes by a database job, but we can force the processing using a call to the push queue procedure. Now the messages have been sent and the mail queue is empty. The Apex mail package is more flexible than the built-in UTL mail package, 
and a lot simpler than coding your own email routines using the UTL SMTP package. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.